Hey, shalom everyone, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're watching The Ponderings of the Pirkei Avot. We've got a huge chunk here to cover. It's uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, but you'll see it'll be much worthwhile. The sages expound in the language of the Mishnah. Blessed is he who chews them and their learning. Rabbi Mir would say, whoever studies the Torah for Torah's sake alone merits many things. Not only that, but the creation of the entire world is worthwhile for him alone. He is called friend, beloved, lover of God, lover of humanity, rejoicer of God, rejoicer of humanity. The Torah enclothes him with humility and awe, makes him to fit to be righteous, pious, correct, and faithful. Dis uh, distance him from sin and brings him close to merit. From him, people enjoy counsel and wisdom and understanding and power, as it is stated in Proverbs 8.14, mine are counsel and wisdom, and I am understanding and mine is power. The Torah grants him sovereignty, dominion, and uh, just prudence. The Torah's secrets are revealed to him, and he becomes an ever-increasing wellspring, and is an unceasing river. He becomes modest, patient, and forgiving of insults. The Torah uplifts him and makes him greater than all creation. So it's talking about the transformative power of the Torah. Reading the Torah and studying Torah for the sake of learning Torah, it says that the whole creation of the world was, was just worthwhile just for him alone, for any person who just studies the Torah. And as they read the Torah, these are the very words of God, the instructions of God, the commands of God. They sink deep into the spirit, into the heart and the soul, and transform the person from the inside out. Okay. Secondly, it says, said Rabbi Joshua to uh, the son of Levi, every day an echo resounds from Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb is also known as Mount Sinai, where the Torah was given, proclaiming and saying, Woe is to the creatures who insult the Torah. For one who does not occupy himself with Torah is considered an outcast, as it is stated in Proverbs 11.22, a golden nose ring in the snout of a swine and a beautiful woman bereft of reason. As it says in Exodus 32.16, and the tablets are the work of God, the writing in God's writing, engraved on the tablets, read not engraved, karut, but liberty, karirut. Probably didn't pronounce that right. Please forgive me. I'm not a native Hebrew speaker. For there is no free individual except for he who occupies himself with the study of Torah. Let me just stop right there just for a second. This flies totally in the face of Protestant Christianity, which says the Torah is a bondage. It says... Uh, it says um, that if you don't accept the Torah, you're considered an outcast. And it says, just as the Torah was engraved, it says, do not read engraved, but read the word liberty. They see the Torah as liberty. They see the law as freedom. And it says, whoever occupies himself with the study of Torah is elevated, as it is stated in Numbers 21, 19. And from the gift of Nahalil, from, and from Nahalil to the heights. Uh, so, you know, the... the, the <laughs> The Torah is freedom. It's not a bondage. Okay, let's let's go on. Number three, one who learns from his fellow a single chapter or a single law or a single verse or a single word or even a single letter, he must treat him with respect. For so was for so we find with David, king of Israel, who did not learn anything from Ahithophel except for two things alone. Yet he called him his master and his guide and his intimate, as it is stated in Psalm 55, 14. And you are a man of my worth, my guide, my intimate friend. Surely we can infer a uh, foratory if, king da if David, king of Israel, who learned nothing from Ahithophel except for two things alone, nevertheless referred to him as his master, guide, and intimate. It is certain, it certainly goes without saying that one who learns from his fellow, a single chapter, a law, a verse, a saying, or even a single letter is obligated to revere him. For And there is no, no reverence but Torah. As it is stated, Proverbs 3, 35 and 28, 10, the sages shall inherit honor, and the integral and the integral shall inherit good, and there is no good but Torah, as it is stated in Proverbs 
uh, for two. I have given you a good purchase, my Torah, do not forsake it. So it's talking about the importance and the merit of Torah. And that if we learn God's instructions, even a small smidgen from anyone, we must respect them just for that because we know that God allowed them to understand that and allowed them to uh, to uh, uh, tell it and to reveal it and to teach it and to uh, share it with someone else. And we are are benefited by that sharing. We are benefited by that teaching of Torah, whether it's a, a single verse, a single word, a single letter. Uh, if we know something more intimately about the Torah, we know more about God because these are the very words of God. Okay, number verse four. Such is the way of Torah. Bread with salt you shall eat, water in small measure you shall drink, and upon the ground you shall sleep. Uh, live a life of deprivation and toil in Torah. If you do so, Fortunate are you, and good it is for you. Psalm 128.2. Fortunate are you uh, in this world, and good for you in the world to come. Whew. That's quite a chunk of, uh, of Pirkei Avot that we just read there, uh, and it's a lot to bite off at once. But it's not so bad because there's a unified theme in these four verses that we laboriously went over, which is, number one, the Torah makes one fit for life itself. The Torah prepares you for life, makes you fit for life, makes you uh, ready to tackle life and take it on and to suck the marrow out of life. Number two, there is freedom in Torah. In the Western world, what makes the Western world free countries? It's the laws. It's the laws that protect the people's freedoms, the laws that protect the people uh, so that they can pursue happiness and freedom and, and enjoy life. So it's the laws that keep them free. It's not a bondage to them. Number three, KISS, K-I-S-S, -S. not the band, no, but the acronym, keep it simple, stupid. We complicate faith too much. We complicate the word of God too much. So many times we just pass over the plain meaning of the word and miss the point totally. Keep it simple, stupid. Hey, we are the sheep of God's pasture. Sheep are the dumbest animals on the face of the earth, right? Uh, there is no wild sheep. They're all domesticated. They're domesticated for a reason. If they weren't, they'd all go extinct. <laughs> because they can't defend themselves, they are at the bottom of the food chain. So keep it simple, stupid. And if we're sheep, we can only understand simple things. So we've got to keep our faith and our relationship with God stupid. Stupid. <laughs> simple. Ah, forgive me. Hope you got a chuckle out of that. Okay, verse 1. Just as you do good things, this is my own commentary on verse 1. Okay, just as you do good things, because just doing them is a reward in and of itself. We study Torah not for the sake of getting back uh, pats on the back or praise, but it is for it is a reward in and of itself just to simply study the Torah. Not to say that other rewards don't come with Torah study, just like when we find someone's wallet or purse in return. We do not necessarily expect a reward when we return a, a, a lost uh, wallet or purse, but uh, it makes it extra nice when somebody says, oh, hey, thanks so much for finding my purse, my wallet. Here, here's, you know, here's a 20. Thank you for helping me find it. So, you know, that's just icing on the cake. You know, we don't expect it, but when the icing comes, oh, it's so sweet and good. So it's very similar with Torah, right? The saying goes, knowledge is power. And the old G.I. Joe cartoon saying, knowing is half the battle. This perfectly describes Torah and how it sets us up for a successful life and for successful living. So, why was King David called a man after God's own heart? Christians say it's because he pursued worship, because he was a singer, because he was a psalmist and a dancer. But this is not fleshed out as the reason anywhere in Torah. It is because of God's very own heart. Uh, God's very own heart is his will, is his law, is his instructions, is his word, is his Torah. And according to Psalm 119 and Psalm 119, David was madly head over heels, madly, deeply, passionately in love with the very heart of God, which is his words, which is his instructions, which is his Torah. It, it, it was his very life. It's what he centered his life around. And that's why he's called a man after God's own heart. So wisdom is a synonym for Torah and wisdom is in the feminine. So a love of Torah is like a love affair between a man and a woman. Torah is like spiritual food. Think of it as a baby being born with the Torah attached to the foot by a string and on the cover it says instruction manual for living. So, you know, the Torah is our instruction manual for life. You know, when we buy a car, when we buy a new appliance, when we buy a new piece of tech, it comes with an instruction manual. Unfortunately, human beings don't. 
but God gave us his instruction manual for life, and that's the Torah. Okay, verse 2, my commentary in verse 2. Elsewhere in the Pirkei Avot, it tells us to couple our Torah study with worthy with a worthy occupation, so we will be too busy to sin. In other words, a job gives us the opportunity to put Torah knowledge into practice. Unlike most Christian interpretations, uh, Jews have never felt or seen the Torah as a bondage, but a way of freedom, a way of, of, of life uh, free from sin. For those who refuse to listen to the Torah, it is considered a curse. What does this say of the Christian who says Messiah did away with the Torah? They are making a liar of Messiah for one because he never said or even hinted that he's done away with the Torah. Just read Matthew chapter 5. He says, think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've not come to abolish but to fulfill. And that uh, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic word means to bring into its full and complete meaning and understanding so you can do it yourselves. My commentary on verse, free, on verse 3, the way to get the most out of Torah study is to study with someone else. As they say, two heads are better than one. Your study partner doesn't have to be a scholar either. And finally, my commentary on verse 4 that we read, uh, it's all about moderation, keeping it simple. Living out the Torah isn't and doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Shalom, Shavuot. Hey, want something to talk about? Go to my YouTube channel, Raybash Katan, and look for the playlist, Raybash's Ramblings. There, I ramble on about things that are important to the spiritual community.